Welcome to Black History Monday, the show that takes you on a journey through Black history to expose our contributions, as well as many racial massacres hidden from history. So sit back, free your mind, and follow me on this journey. The Slocum Massacre of 1910 In 1910, an armed white mob in Texas massacred their black neighbors and none of them were prosecuted. A whole town was wiped out and only in the past few years was there any acknowledgement. On July 29, 1910, Charlie Wilson, Cleveland Larkin, and Willistus Lusk Holly were walking down a dirt road in rural Slocum, Texas. They were on their way to tend to family and livestock when they were blindsided by a mob of armed white men. The three black teenagers became the first casualties of what would turn out to be a shameful massacre, with groups of white Texans going from road to road, house to house, shooting black citizens. Wilson and Holly survived the attack, but Larkin succumbed to the injuries. The ensuing bloodshed lasted for at least two days, spilling to the south in Houston County. Black residents hastily gathered what belongings they could and escaped across creeks to wooded areas and marshes. Some families fled to the nearby town of Palestine, while others trekked farther. During the panic, they had no choice but to leave behind loved ones who had been killed along the roads and in the woods of Slocum. Local officials turned to Texas Governor Thomas Campbell, and a company of U.S. Cavalry troops and Texas Rangers were brought in to quell the situations as the violence intensified. Mass hysteria gripped the community for 48 hours. Packs of armed white men combed the area shooting black people until Sheriff William H. Black arrived. According to a report he wrote afterward, every black victim was unarmed and most were shot in the back. In January 2016, the descendants of the black victims helped unveil a roadside marker that offers a brief account of the July 29, 1910 massacre. As with many of the massacres and slaughters from this era, it started with angry, race-hating mobs of white people believing a story that was not based in reality. At the time, racial violence was common in Texas and across the South. Between 1885 and 1942, 465 lynchings were recorded in Texas, 339 of them of blacks, the third highest number of lynchings in any state, according to the Texas State Historical Association. In the summer of 1910, According to family stories and news accounts from that time, racial tensions in the Slocum area were said to be running even higher because of the recent lynching of a black man in nearby Cherokee County. Rumors circulated that black residents were gathering to plan armed retribution. Passions were further stoked in July of that year when a white man trying to collect a debt scuffled with an African American. White mobs quickly formed armed with shotguns and rifles, according to the accounts. Word spread to Palestine, and whites rushed to Slocum, forming an angry crowd of an estimated 1,000 people. In separate attacks, a 30-year-old black man was found shot to death on another road. Four others, including a 70-year-old man, were slain in a house near Slocum. Reporters counted eight bodies, several of them buried in a common grave dug on the property of one of the dead. Authorities suspected that many more had died. The mobs were just determined to kill all Negroes they could find. Now, there are several theories as to what motivated the massacre. According to an account in the semi-weekly Courier Times of Tyler, the incident was attributed to a dispute between black businessman Marsh Holly, father of Lusk and Alex Holly, and a white farmer over an unpaid debt. Marsh's father, Jack Holly, owned several hundred acres of land and sold goods from his store to both black and white customers. 
He was among those who escaped the violence, leaving behind all he'd worked for. After 81 years, a survivor of the deadly Sloka massacre is finally given a proper funeral service. The massacre happened when more than 200 members of the black community were killed by mobs of white people in Anderson County. Family members of Sloka massacre survivor Jack Holly gathered at the Oakwood Cemetery in Oakwood, where he was buried. Holly's grave was only marked by rocks, but the family finally unveiled a proper headstone. The family says it serves as a reminder of how strong they are and always have been. The young younger generation will be able to step up and say, hey, if my ancestors made it, I can do it too. Another account involved Jim Sperger, a white man alleged to have instigated the event because he didn't want to take orders from his black boss. Some said the killings were simply a land grab as they believe white residents begrudge the prosperity of their black neighbors. Now, that last one would not be a surprise. As I covered in last season's episode on Black Wall Street, jealousy was a large part of what happened there. How many of these stories are hidden from the black community? Look around, family. On Earth, we are the most hated people. Take a look at one recent example. The Rona pandemic encircling the globe originated in Wuhan, China. Despite the questionable numbers, most of the black nations have the lowest numbers of cases. Despite that, Mainstream media was trying to make us the global examples and the face of the coronavirus. Black people, you need to wake up and start coming together as a family because they don't like us, and our dysfunction towards one another is our biggest weakness. This is like giving your killer the ammunition to kill you. Next week, Monday, we will continue on this journey as we walk through the doors of history. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share. Click the notification bell so you'll be notified when we upload new videos. Find The Awakening Frequency on Twitter, Instagram, and on Facebook. Research is key. Always do your own research and never just listen to what people tell you. Question everything, believe nobody but yourself. We are The Awakening Frequency. Out of the millions of potential subscribers, we just want to reach one so each one can teach one. Peace.